Hello everyone, Ryan here once again, and in this video, I'm going to be covering how to install an alternative to MSI Afterburner in Linux. So chances are if you've been given on Windows, probably at some point you've wanted to check how the game was running with your particular hardware. In most cases, you might have used a simple FPS counter, that normally does the trick. However, if you did want to require more detailed information about how your RAM, CPU or GPU has been utilised on your system, you might have installed a little application called MSI Afterburner. You may have also wanted to overclock your GPU or even set a custom VAN profile. So again, you probably installed Afterburner to do this. Now, Afterburner itself does consist of two applications. You have the named application itself, as well as a server component, which is what displays the overlay when the game is running. Now, unfortunately, to my knowledge at least, this is only developed for Windows. So in Linux world, we need to look at some alternatives. So first, let's look at some game overlay options available for Linux. When it comes to this kind of thing, uh, there's only really one option that should be considered, and that is the all and mighty Mango Hood. Now, this is a tool that allows you to display your frame rate, your frame timings, your CPU, your RAM, your GPU usage for a game that you're currently playing. In fact, if you've ever seen any footage of games being played on the Steam Deck or even Linux itself, then more than likely the person who uploaded the footage has been using Mango Hood. So the installation of Mango Hood is straightforward, although it will differ depending on what Linux distribution you're using. But, uh, most distributions nowadays do include Mango Hood in their respective repositories. But in essence, you're just going to install it directly using your distribution's package manager. Now, in my particular case, since I'm using Endeavor OS, which is a Arch Linux in pretty much everything but its name, then I end up installing Mango Hood from the AUR or the Arch user repository. So once you've installed Mango Hood, you need to set what will appear in the overlay by using the config file for the application. Although, if I'm perfectly honest, I'd recommend looking at a second piece of software for this purpose. And that piece of software is called Govlay, and it's just a GUI basically to manage Vulkan and OpenGL overlays, and that does include Mango Hood. In other words, you don't need to mess around with config files. All you do is launch Govlay, select the options you wish to display in Mango Hood, and then save the settings. So much like the installation of Mango Hood, then you'll find that it's possible to install Govlay directly from your distribution's repositories using your package manager. However, once again, since I'm using a DevOS, I'm going to be installing Govlay from the AUR. So once Govlay is installed, you want to launch it from your application launcher. So the application interface itself does support three projects. You have Mango Hood, VK Basalt, and Replay Sorcery. Although, of course, we don't need to focus on the first option. So under the Mango Hood option here, you have four tabs. You have Visual. Now the Visual tab will allow you to specify the orientation, the fonts used, size of the fonts, the theme, I'm going to use a different theme, the positioning of the actual overlay itself, and the transparency of Mango when it's displayed. In my particular case, the only real change I make is under the size here, I tend to drop it to 720p as I find that the default option is a little bit too big. The performance tab will allow you to set any FPS limits, enable VSync, which will override the in-game VSync, or enable login for benchmarking purposes. I don't tend to make any change in this particular option here. Now, the metric tab is where you can get into the real meat and potatoes of Manga Hood, as this is gonna dictate what metrics will be displayed on the overlay. So as you can see, there's a vast array of different options that you can enable, and that covers your GPU, CPU, as well as your memory usage. So it's really up to completely up to you at this point which ones you want to enable. And then at the end, you have extras, which the only two that I really tick on this is FPS and then the frame time. Now, one other thing you can do, if you don't want to go through manually selecting all the metrics, you do have a couple of presets. Under here where it says quick layouts, you've got minimum, compact, complete, and then of course, graph. Now, with all the options, I tend to go for the compact option here. Now, each of these changes will be updated on the fly. And as you can see on the right hand side, there'll be like a preview window that will show you what settings are being applied. But either way, once you've made your settings, you want to click save at the bottom here. And the final thing you can do is you can actually launch a test application with Mango Hood applied. Let's do that, click on the hamburger icon here and choose the option here where it says run VK cube test. And unsurprisingly, you get a spinning cube. So once you've configured your Mango Hood layout, it's time to actually apply it to some games. So for any games launched from Steam, all you need to do is add the following to the game's custom launch options. So to do that, right click on the game, go to properties, and then here, just type in Mango Hood, all lowercase, space, and then the percentage sign, the word command, again, lower space, 
and then the percentage sign. And all that really means is that when you launch a game, it will now have Mango HUD applied to that. Now, alternatively, if you've got some games installed through Lutris, you can also apply Mango HUD to them as well. Now, the way you do that is you right click on the game in question, go to your column figure, navigate to where it says system options, and then just make sure you've ticked the option here where it says FPS counter Mango HUD. Once that's toggled on, click save. And what that means is that any game launched through that application, or in this case the game launcher, will now have Mango HUD applied to it. Okay, so at this point we've actually covered the overlay aspect of Afterburner, so now we need to move on to the overclocking side of things. So much like Windows, it is possible to set custom fan profiles or even overclock AMD and NVIDIA graphics cards on Linux. However, since I have an NVIDIA RTX 3060 Ti, I'm only going to be covering that process in the video, but I am going to leave links in the description for the equivalent software available for AMD GPUs. So, for my purpose, I'm going to be using an application called Green with Envy or GWE, and this is a system utility designed to provide information, control fans, and overclock NVIDIA graphic cards. Although, as of this video being released, GWE will only work with Xorg and not Wayland. So the first thing to do is enable some cool bits and you can think of cool bits as little bits of code that unlock additional functionality for your graphics card. Obviously in this case it's going to be for overclocking and custom fan profiles. And historically cool bits did originate on Windows but were later ported across to Linux as well. So to enable overclocking and custom fan profiles for NVIDIA GPUs you need to set what's known as a cool bit value of 12 in the Xorg config file. Now you can usually find this if you go to your root directory, etc, and then scroll down to the section here where it says x11, and it's this file here, this xorg.config. Let's open that up, choose a text editor, in my case I'm going to be using Kate, and if you scroll to the section here where it says section device, underneath where it says board name, which is going to be your model of your GPU, you want to add a new option where it says option, and then in brackets, cool bits with a capital C, close brackets, space, just a single space, then open brackets again, and then the number 12, and then close brackets. Once you've done that, you want to save the file, and then reboot your system to apply those settings. So once the cool bits have been enabled, we can move on to installing Green with Envy, which is available as a flat pack, and that's the recommended way to install the application. So obviously make sure that you've got flat pack support enabled on your system, Install the application and then launch once it's installed. So the interface of Green of Envy is highly informative. It'll display the current temperature of your GPU, the driver version you've got installed, memory consumption, clock speeds, as well as the current fan speeds if applicable. So to create a new overclock profile, you want to now get to the section here where it says overclock profile, fully enough. Click the option here where it says add new profile. Let's give it a name, so we'll call it uh, test. And then from here, you can offset the GPU in megahertz. So we'll put some random like that. And do the same thing for memory. And then you want to click apply to apply that. And then save to close that down. Now you'll notice it's been applied because at the bottom here, this value here will change to what you've just set. Now, if you ever want to set that back to defaults, you can choose the option here where it says defaults. And then click apply. As you can see, it's gone back to normal now. You can also delete these as well if you select it and choose the option here where it says delete, or if you want to apply it at a later date, once again select it and click apply. And this will be done automatically. Uh, similarly, to create a custom fan profile, you want to select here where it says add new profile. Again, we'll just call it test. Click on the option here where it says step, the plus, and then we set a custom temperature we want to hit before the, the fans actually kick in. So again, I'm just going to choose random values here just to show it how it works and then click save, as you can see you get a nice little graph, click X to delete that, and then finally click apply here. Now once again if you want to put everything back to the way it should be, select the option where it says auto vBIOS controlled, click apply, and there you go, voila, all done. Now of course this covers all the basic functionality of Green with Envy, but if you do want to do some more advanced configuration, then I'd recommend you just read up on the documentation on the project's GitLab page. So at this stage, we've basically covered all the functionality offered by MSI Afterburner, and we've been using open source tools available and developed exclusively for Linux. So in conclusion, although MSI Afterburner is the king when it comes to gaming overlays and overclocking GPUs on Windows, 
It is fantastic to see that the equivalent tools are available for Linux, and I personally think that helps to break down the barrier of entry for inexperienced users of Linux that may want to try gaming for the first time. As always guys, thank you very much for watching this video, and if you did find it helpful, then you know what to do, leave a like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. See you again soon guys, bye!